isn't it good that you can come to church and laugh and have a good time? <coughs> we don't have to be all stuffed up and stuck up and dressed up and wouldn't know. <laughs> wouldn't know. Huh? Nah, that's okay. That's all right. <laughs> hey, Joe Namath used to worm. <laughs> what? Okay. <coughs> going to be a little different today, I think. First Peter, chapter 1. Starting in verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance, inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and does not fade away. Amen. We have been adopted. We have been recreated through Jesus Christ into an inheritance that is incorruptible and undefiled and does not fade away. It's here. It's permanent. Heaven is for real, folks. It's there. It's permanent. <coughs> Reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. What does that mean, revealed in the last time? It means that we are living in the last time, for sure. We know that. But it also means our salvation, that the the salvation that we hope for will be revealed to us in the last time. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Remember when Jesus appeared to the disciples the night of the resurrection, he said, Behold my body. He said, Flesh, it is flesh and bone. He didn't say flesh and blood. He said, Flesh and bone. Our bodies will change at that moment when Christ returns. Our bodies will change. <coughs> it goes on to say, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. In other words, we shall not all die. But we shall be changed. How are we going to be changed? This mortal, corruptible body has got to put on an eternal, uncorruptible body. That happens at the moment when Jesus comes back to the resurrection of the dead. Paul tells us that the dead will rise first. He goes on here in verse 52, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible in 
1 Thessalonians chapter 4, he says the dead will be raised first. We shall not precede those that have fallen asleep. But the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we which are alive and remain will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Our, our mortal corruptible bodies will take on eternal incorruptible bodies. We will be perfect as Jesus is perfect. I heard a preacher the other day. He said, I had, had a lady asked me one time, she said, how old are we going to be in heaven? And I liked his answer. He said, when Jesus Christ walked on this earth and was crucified, he was 33 years old. We're all going to be 33 years old in heaven. So you can forget 29 don't know if that's a fact or not, but it sounded good. I was a lot slimmer and a whole lot better looking when I was 33 than I are now. <laughs> Amen. Do what? <laughs> I wish. In, in two weeks, I'll be 59. Yeah, in two weeks, I'll be 59. <laughs> Thank you, dear. <laughs> the trumpet will sound, and the dead in Christ will raise incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this, in, this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So then, so when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying which was written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Amen. Victory. We put on our incorruptible heavenly bodies and we're out of here. Glory. I'm ready. I don't know about you, but I'm ready. Well, in chapter 2 uh, Peter, 1 Peter, back in 1 Peter 1 and 6. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while if need be, have been grieved by various trials. We rejoice in the fact that we're going to change when Christ comes back. And we're going to have our incorruptible heavenly bodies and we're out of here and we don't have to worry about death anymore because death can't touch us in heaven. Amen. But it goes on to tell us here in, in Peter that we rejoice in this fact. I'm happy that all of us are going out of here. And death and the devil can't touch us anymore. Amen? But now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. Woo! Ain't that the truth? The devil's been working overtime. But you know what? I read the end of the book. It's pretty neat. Let me get over here. He who testifies of these things says, Surely I am coming quickly. <coughs> Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Guess what? We won. That is the only author I know that started with. Amen. And wrote the book backwards. He knew how all this was going to turn out. And he had a plan for each and every one of you before he ever finished. Before any beginning ever happened, God knew you. He had a plan for you. And he had a plan that he wants to carry out in your life. And he knew that before he ever put the 
in the beginning, God. And I've been like Selma. In the beginning, God. Okay? Where'd God come from? Don't know. But you know what? I'm going to ask him. <laughs> when I get there, that's one of the first things. They say, in the beginning, God. Okay, where'd God come from? It's just one of those things we've got to take by faith. You just got to believe it. And it, to me, it takes a time to believe that they must go to the bill from hell high than it does to believe. That God can heal a little spot in an eyelid, or a knee, or diabetes, or cancer. If I can believe that God can save me, I can believe God can heal me. Because you know what? I know me a whole lot better than any of you know me. And I learned that. Tested by fire, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Whom having been, having not seen, yet ye love. You haven't seen Jesus. Receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your soul. Amen. And it sounds a little different, but I think First Corinthians thirteen sheds a little bit of light on this. In verse twelve. Because we haven't seen him. For now, we see in a mirror dimly. I really like the way the King James put that. For now, we see through a glass. Darkly. You ever been up, went up to an old farmhouse that's been there for years and years, and the windows are so dirty and dark you can't hardly see through, and you're trying to rub on that window to see through that window to see what's on the inside? That's kind of the way it is now. We see through this glass dimly. We can't see clearly what's on the other side. We know by faith something's better out there waiting on us, but we can't really get a good grasp on it because we can't see it. But then it says, but then we will see face to face. Then we'll stand
but then I shall know just as I am known. And there's not a question that I have today about his word that he won't answer when I look into his face of faith. He will explain it. He will explain that one word we can't get the answer to right now. Why? Why does she have to go through what she went through? Why do we have why do our kids have to go through this bullying and all this junk at school? Why do people die at a young age and way before their time? Why? 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 Folks, go to heaven. A lot of those questions we're never going to get the answer to. But one more thing. Did I have to walk alone? Then Francis would say, My son, my daughter, you weren't alone. That's where I came in from. Your feet don't touch me. Don't touch me. During our hardest times, our darkest hour, we can always lean on him. talking about our salvation and our being in the presence of the Father. And then it goes into, so this salvation the prophets have inquired and searched carefully who prophesied of the grace that would come to you. They long for that salvation. They long for that They search for it. Searching what? For what manner of time the Spirit of Christ who is in them, who was in them, was indicating when he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow. All the prophets of the Old Testament longed for that day. But they never seen it. They never seen it. Until Christ actually came and he died on the cross. And then he went to hell and took the keys of death, hell, and the grave away from the devil. And on his way back out, he stopped in purgatory where all of the all of the, the good people went at one time to a place called Purgatory, or Abraham's bosom. And we know this because of the rich man and the story of the rich man and Lazarus. When the rich man died, he went to hell. Lazarus died, he went, the angels carried him to Abraham's bosom. It was a place of holding for all of the people that lived and died up until Christ died on the cross and was buried. He went there, preached the gospel that we have freely in this book today. And it says he led captivity captive. He led those people in. They longed for it. As they were prophesying about all of this stuff, they were prophesying about Jesus and everything that was going to happen to him and the grace of God that was coming to this world. They go, why not now? We want it now. That's us. We want it now. It's like that, it's like that movie. It's my money and I want it now. <laughs> you know, go through some things. Amen? Jesus said in Matthew chapter 13,
seen that many prophets desired to see what we have seen and what we see. They desired, they longed for Christ to come, the Messiah to come and deliver the world. They longed to see people healed the way we should see people healed today. I long for the day that we get back to the old time Those people believed God. They trusted God. And when they spoke it, they expected it to happen. Amen? Mm -hmm. that's, that's where I want to get back to. Mark 11, 23 and 24. When you, if you say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea. And I ask the same question, why did you see the mountain? somewhere the other day, and I don't remember where it was at. It said, if you can believe that God can tear that mountain out of the ground and throw it in the sea, you can believe God can end. Hey. What's, what's the mountain in your life today? What is it? Anything that tries to separate you from the presence of Whether it's cancer, whether it's diabetes, whether it's seizures, whether it's whatever, a sore in the eye, anything that steps between, between you and your perfect body and Jesus Christ is a mountain that needs to be removed. A back problem is a mountain. Financial problems are mountains. Speak to those mountains. Tell them that my God says if I will speak to you and tell you what I want done and how you're going to act and not doubt in my heart but believe what I say is going to come to pass, then I will have whatever I say. We've got to speak to that mountain, but we've also got to believe in our heart that what we speak is true. Just like God said, in the beginning, God created. And God said, let there be light. He didn't have a doubt that there was going to be light. God has never had a doubt in his entire life. Because he believes what he speaks will come to pass. Folks, we have that same authority on this earth. We are given that. Jesus said, all authority has been given to me on heaven and in earth. What's the next word he said? Go. He transferred all of that authority that he had while he was alive on this earth to us when he told us to go into all the world and preach the gospel. He said, also said the things that I do, you will do also. What, what we've seen Jesus do, we didn't see it, but we've read about it from the guys that did see it. We read about what Jesus did. Jesus said, the things that I do, you will do also. And greater things will you do because I go to the Father. When Jesus walked on this earth, he could reach that little area around the Sea of Galilee in Jerusalem. That was pretty much it. Folks, today, this message that you're hearing wasn't there. We have the ability to reach people in the four corners of the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. What's another one of the things that Jesus said? And this word of the gospel is preached to every nation. What does it? It's your example. Bible tells me when the gospel 
as many of the prophets desired to see what we see today. Verse 13. Verse 2. Therefore, gird up your loins, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lusts, as in your ignorance. In other words, first, Second Corinthians 5.17 If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things passed away. Behold, all things have become new. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and He's living in your heart, and you're being led by the Holy Spirit, you don't do what you used to do. You are a different person. Amen? You're a different person. Things change. you was, then you ain't. <laughs> In other words, if you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, but you're still going out and doing what you was doing, then you ain't truly accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you is what you was, then you ain't. And if you believe that just coming into church and sitting in a chair and listening to the preacher run off at the mouth is going to get you to heaven, then you must think sitting in the garage will make you a Lamborghini. <laughs> no, nah, I'm a rough Cadillac. <laughs> oh, you romp, you raise them. I raised it. I raised the bar a little bit. Lamborghini, Denali, or whatever they call it. It's about. If you is what you is, then you ain't. You have got to change. And you can't change by yourself. You can only change through the power of the Holy Spirit living inside of you and leading and guiding you. Amen? In verse 17, And if you call on the Father, who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conducts yourselves throughout the time of your stay here. So our, our time here is just a little short time, our stay here. Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver and gold. We aren't bought. tradition of the church and our forefathers don't save us. And I have been to churches over my life that, well, this is the way we've always done it. This is the way we're always going to do it. Great, great, great granddaddy Jones said this is the way you do it, so this is the way we're going to do it. 